Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful trivet. Also known as a hot plate or hot pad, this design can be known as a prayer point star or an Amish folded star. I'm not actually sure of the real name, but either way it's beautiful and we're going to make it into a beautiful trivet to adorn our holiday table this year. Now of course with all my tutorials there will be a blog post with all the measurements, products and tools I use in this video and if you're not already I would love it if you subscribe, hit the notification bell to be alerted of new and future tutorials and of course smash the like button as the kids like to say. Now for this tutorial you will need five different size triangles so it's important for you guys to just go over to the blog post and write them all down so you have them in front of you when you go to make this project. We are going to be using cotton for the whole thing, but I will be putting some Insel Bright on the inside of my trivet and that will help to protect my table. Usually find those in oven mitts and things like that. Okay, so you're going to need four different size squares and we're going to fold them all into triangles like this. Um, I just folded these ones beforehand, but I'll show you how to do that very shortly. And then you're also going to need a piece of binding to go all the way around your trivet and also to add a little loop on it. So you have the four different size squares um, and you're going to need five of the smallest square and then eight of each additional size. Now with the smallest square, we're going to have five pieces and one of them is going to just be like kind of a backing of sorts. So you'll see very shortly. So we won't need to fold that one, but we need to fold all the rest of the squares into this triangle shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold the square in half and I'm going to press. And then I'm going to take the corner that is the folded corner and I'm going to fold that down to the center. I'm going to place a dab of glue first just because it gives less headaches I think with this type of project. Um, you don't have to use the glue if you don't want to but it's sort of just a basting glue just to keep all the triangles in the right shape and when we go to assemble the star you'll really enjoy just having it all you know, it's all stuck together and the triangles aren't coming apart. So I just did that on both sides, bringing both sides down, folding it, making sure that the little point is as perfect as you can get it. And I like to fold it down and then place my finger on the point and then fold the other side down, still holding it down. And then I actually will press it from the point down just so that I don't end up accidentally shifting that point because the bottom of the triangle won't be shown anywhere. So it's okay if that's not even or perfect. It's just that point that you want to try to get as perfect as possible. And so I'm just going to do that with all the rest of them. So this is a great little project if you want to just cut out all your squares and then you can just sit in front of the TV and you can even enlist the help of your children too if they're just sitting next to you not doing anything. Okay, so we're gonna keep going and then we're gonna do that with all the other squares except for that first little foundation square that's going to be in the middle. Um, so after this, then we are going to take the large square. So this is just a foundation piece. This is just kind of a scrap piece. So you don't necessarily have to have a nice piece of fabric for this part, but the other square that is the same size will be the backing fabric. So that one you want to have a nice, you know, a nice pattern or whatever. So I'm just going to take this, I fold it in half and then I folded it again and then I folded it diagonally and I just did that so I could kind of um, score, make some lines and I'm just going to take a pen and I'm going to draw out all those little lines. You're not going to see any of this in your finished product and you don't necessarily have to do this like in the long run but of course if you're new to this project um, this is just a good little thing to do at the beginning to kind of, you know, get your bearings and figure out how exactly you do this. Um, so one day you might not have to do this and you might be able just to eyeball it. But for now, we are going to make guidelines and then we're going to mark um, little notches all along the line. So the first mark we're going to put at an inch and a half and then we're going to do three quarters of an inch um, after that about three times. And that's just going to be um, to help us place our triangles. So yeah, like I said, um, one day you might not have to do this, but for now, if you're learning, then I definitely recommend doing this. 
So this is how it should look. So first we're gonna start off with that little foundation piece. And I'm just gonna use my glue again. I really like using that, you know, Elmer's school glue. And once you press it, it sets right away. So it kinda, you know, it's just kinda perfect. Um, so I'm just gonna take those four triangles that are the smallest, and I'm gonna place that onto that foundation piece with all the points intersecting in the middle. Um, you wanna make that as perfect as possible because this is going to be the center of your design. And the reason why we made that little foundation piece the same fabric was just so that in case you can see in between the little folds that it's not noticeable and it's not, you know, obvious that it is different fabric. So now we're just going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance all around the whole piece and that's just going to base it all together. So all the seams that we do from here on are pretty much just to baste, but um, eventually I'll, t I'll let you know when you know your seams matter and when they will be seen. So don't worry about, it's, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just get everything in place. So we're going to take that piece and we're going to place that onto our large foundation piece. Um, so you're just going to make sure they're lined up with the straight lines, the first little marking that we place there. And again, I'm just going to put a little dab of glue. You don't have to, but this is what I'm going to do. Making sure that it is all lined up and perfectly centered on this foundation piece. Now we're going to take the next size triangles and we're going to place those first. We're going to work with four at a time, um, especially if you're new to this project but later on I'll show you kind of how to make things go a little faster. But we're just gonna take each triangle and we're going to line those up with the next marking down, making sure that the center fold is lined up with those straight lines and everything looks nice and even. And then we're going to baste these again and we'll baste them at the bottom of the triangles doing a quarter of an inch seam allowance and again, I'm just going to place some glue just to make sure that things are perfect. I always set the glue with my iron and I'm gonna go ahead and do those basting stitches. So when I do this, I usually don't even cut my threads. I'll just go to the end of the triangle and then I'll just lift my needle, replace my design and then just keep sewing. So I don't even worry about that stuff because all those little threads, those are all going to be hidden inside, so not a big deal. So now we're going to place the other four triangles of this size. And I'm going to put those in between the first triangles. So the next notch that is on the diagonal line, we will place the triangle, the bottom of it, on there, lining up our fold right down the center, making sure that it looks nice and even. Um, as you can see, the kind of shape of the star is forming when we place these triangles. So you want to make sure that they're perfectly centered like this, <laughs> and then it'll look nice and even and really pretty when you're done. And I really like how I did a print and then I went with a solid color. It really makes the center of it pop. So again, I'm going to do those basting stitches right at the bottom of those triangles. So I really hope that you're enjoying this tutorial. So far, if you do decide to make this project, I would love to see it. So if you're not already following us over on the Facebook or Instagram, all those links are in the description box below. So definitely come over, join the community and show us what you're working on. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the next size triangles. And again, we're going to do four triangles at a time. And I'm just gonna to try to speed through this stuff. Um, it's basically the same as it was before. I'm just gonna add some dabs of glue, put the four points lined up with the next notch on those straight lines. And instead of basting these ones down, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna do it. And I'm gonna put the next four triangles down straight away. And because I'm using the glue, then you know, there's less likely it will shift around, but I'm just gonna put the other four triangles and then I will just sew all the way around. And I'm gonna do that again for the next set of triangles. So once you get confident in making these, um, it really can go a lot faster when you do it like this. So the last thing I'm going to do is just put a whole big thing of glue all the way around and place 
those last triangles to finish off my little design here. Now, of course, if you love this design and you don't want to make a trivet, you could keep going and take those little triangles that we made, add a half inch to each square, and then just keep going and make it bigger. And some I've seen them make it into, you know, pillow shams and things like that. So, or even like art on your wall. So you can really have fun with these triangles. I'm just gonna, again, sew all the way around. So now that we're finished our design, then we are going to put the backing. So we're kind of making that quilt sandwich that you would make if you're making a quilt, but we are using that Insel Bright material to put into the center. If you don't have any Insel Bright, you could use um, some fleece, you know, maybe some few layers of flannel, something that obviously would just add some more layers so that you can protect the surface that you're putting it on. I'm also going to be using some fabric tack to just, you know, baste everything into place. I would use that for my larger quilts. Of course, I could just use that glue stick again if I wanted to, but because I already had that on hand, that's what I did. Um, if you wanted, you could just use safety pins also, so you don't even need to use glue at the end of the day. Um, it's all whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to do that little fabric tack and then I will press it all into place and then I'm going to do my quilting. So for this design, you don't necessarily have to get super fancy with it, especially if you're new to quilting. So you can just follow all of the lines. Um, we're just gonna go from corner to corner and from side to side. We're gonna sew right down, um, as they call it, sewing in the ditch. And if you wanted to get fancy, you could also follow the lines of the star. Whatever design you decide, it will show up on the back. So it could make it look prettier. It could make it look messy. It just depends on your skill level of quilting. And because we're just doing straight lines, we can just use our regular presser foot and we don't need to get too fancy. And from here, if you have been using a basting stitch up until now, you're gonna wanna bring your machine stitch back down to maybe a 2.5 or a three stitch length. So here it is, all finished quilting. I didn't get too fancy, I just followed those lines, so this is how it will look. So now we're going to cut it into a circle. Now this is probably gonna be a seven and a half inch in diameter circle. I actually found a Tupperware lid that was the perfect size. So I just used that as a guide to um, cut all the way around. You can get, of course, a big piece of cardboard and just make that out of your guide if you want to. Or you can just free hand it <laughs> if you're, um, if you're brave. I'm not brave though. So I just use this lid and I will cut all the way around it. And there is multiple layers. So I really had to give myself some leverage. So as you can see, I'm like right in the way of the camera because I'm, I have to like really, you know, you need a nice sharp blade. And you also, you really want to use a rotary cutter if you're doing this. <laughs> okay. So now I'm just going to take a little piece of that bias tape and I'm going to create a little strap and this is going to be for my loop. You don't have to add a loop if you don't want to, but if you wanted to display the trivet on your wall, you could do that. Or, you know, some people just like to hang up their trivets and their, you know, oven mitts and things. So it's always nice just to put a little loop on there so you have the option. So I'm going to take my bias binding. This is a two inch wide piece and I fold it in half lengthways. And then I'm just going to line up the raw edge of my binding with the raw edge of the trivet. And then I'll just take that little piece there that I think is probably like three inches long. I'll fold it in half and then I'll just place that somewhere along my bias binding, slipping it right under there. Um, and I did line it up with a point of the star so that, you know, when you do hang it on the wall, then it'll just, you know, the star will look like that. I don't know. But anyways, so I'm just going to go ahead and just do the bias binding. I'm not an expert at bias binding. I've said this in videos in the past, so I would definitely not call me an expert, I guess. <laughs> but I do like to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around, and then I will flip the binding over the raw edge. And then I actually decided to do it by hand and just sew the other side of the binding down 
When I get to the end of the binding, I just cut it and then I folded the raw edge in and then I kind of just overlapped it. So it's not super fancy at all. Like there are ways of finishing your binding properly that I still haven't figured out. I will get there one day, but um, I'm not there yet. So I just kind of tucked it in there and then tucked the raw edge in there and then just kept going. <laughs> So after you've sewn on your binding, then you're just going to snip off, you know, any excess. If there is too much for your binding to wrap around, then you can just trim off more of your, you know, fabric. <laughs> and I'm just going to flip it over the raw edge. And I did an invisible stitch to secure the other side of my binding. And then that's pretty much it. I found that with even both, I'm not sure if it's because of the amount of fabric, but it kind of made the whole thing kind of like curve from the center, which I found interesting. I don't know if that's because of the Inselbright. I mean, it's okay because even if you put it on the wall, it kind of adds dimension to it, but I'm just surprised that it doesn't want to lay flat. And that was for both of them. But isn't this such an adorable little gift that you could, you know, make a set and then give it to a friend around the holiday season? I'm definitely going to be making more. So I will show you guys over at my social media. So I hope that you're following me over there. So I'm just doing this all by hand, but you don't have to, of course. You can, you can just sew all the way around the edge. And, you know, maybe if you have to use a matching thread so that it's not super obvious that you're not amazing at sewing straight or curved lines, you can do that. <laughs> um, this is kind of my get a, my workaround so that you don't have to see how bad I am at doing curved lines. And then it's all hidden. So this is a hidden, um, a hidden, hidden stitch, an invisible stitch. That's it. So here are both of them. I think they turned out super cute. I love them. They would be so cute hanging on a wall too though. Um, such a great little gift to give somebody. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And of course, if you're not already subscribed, don't forget to do that and hit the notification bell. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you're enjoying the 12 days of Christmas tutorials and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.